Hey guys, so this is going to be a breakdown of everything that you might need to get started with resin 3D printing. So um, I've had my printer for I guess a little over three months now and uh, you know I've done a ton of printing with it and you know I've run through you know the typical issues that you come across and I've got my workflow pretty much down so I think that I'm in a good place now just to go over all the gear that I use, what I think is essential, how much it costs, and extra stuff that will not necessarily um, be needed, but uh, will help with the workflow. So just starting off, you're definitely going to need a printer uh, <laughs> and some resin. That's pretty much the bare, bare minimum of what you're going to need. Um, and it comes with a toolkit. Um, this is the Algumars. Um, similar printers like the Anycubic Photon. Um, there's a ton that, that are similar to this, this type. Um, will all come with uh, relatively the same stuff. If you do only get, though, just the printer and resin, you, you're only going to be able... You're going to be limited to only a few prints because you're going to need some additional stuff. Right off the bat... You're definitely going to need a lot of paper towels. It can get messy, even though I try to be as clean as possible. And I actually just cleaned off this table in these photos, but normally I have a bunch of uh, throwaway newspaper down on the table. Uh, yeah, so I think the first most important thing that you're going to need to buy in addition are additional gloves. Most of the test kit or the tool kits that come with the printers only have, you know, a few pair of gloves. And so that's really only good for a few prints. Uh, you really shouldn't be reusing the gloves because the resin will eat through and then get on your skin and cause all sorts of issues. Yeah, but you can get a nice big box of, uh, make sure they're nitrile. They're, those are, that's the only uh, material I believe that protects against the resin. And you can get a big box of them and, you know, you'll have them for a long while. Get a couple boxes, they, they don't go bad. Let's see. Uh, the next thing, this ended up being really important. So if you do have a print failure, for whatever reason you want to clean out your print bed, you want to get a funnel. Um, and there's uh, there's things that uh, I've seen on Thingiverse that you can print and like ha um, leave your print bed up so that it'll slowly drain into the bottle. I think this is just a good solution. And the toolbox comes with filters and it will sit right in this uh, with a very fine mesh screen to catch any particles that might be stuck in the in the uh, resin in, in your print bed so yeah this is a collapsible one i think it came in a set but you really only need one and silicone's nice because it'll the resin will wash right off and pretty much wipe off with a paper towel but definitely want to invest in one of these if you don't want to cause a huge mess uh, next important thing, uh, these pickle jars, well, I don't know what you would call them, uh, pickle containers. So this is where you keep uh, your IPA or soapy water if you're using water washable resin. And there's a little platform in here with a handle so this lid comes off and then you can rinse it up and down. And it might actually, a lot of people I've seen actually get two of these. I just have one Tupperware container. And what I do is I just break off the supports in here and leave them. And then this is my more clean solution. And then I, I dunk it in here. So most people I've seen their workflow, they have one dirty container and one more clean container, which they, you know, eventually swap out. Uh, here's some more stuff. Isopropyl alcohol. Tough to find right now. And there's definitely a trade-off. If you get the water washable resin, you don't necessarily need it. I would still get it, um, especially if you can find it for cheap. Make sure it's 90 plus percent. I think anywhere from 90 to you know 99.5 percent is good. Uh, and even if you're using the water washable resin, it will obviously come. The resin will clean off easier if you're using alcohol, but you don't necessarily need it. And so, if you want to save money on alcohol, you can try out the water washable or vice versa. I think it's handy to have a bottle anyway. Um, and then I've got this UV light and some masking tape and this Dremel. Uh, this is definitely not necessary, but it is nice uh, if you have a bunch of uh, jagged pieces of supports 
hanging off your model and you want to sand it smooth before priming, this was a nice investment um, just to clean up the prints a little bit. And there's a bunch of tops. And these range, I think, anywhere from like, you know, 20 to 100 something dollars. I think this one was like 30 bucks. Uh, this is that UV light. So yeah, you don't necessarily, this is another one that's, that's an extra. You don't necessarily need this. Most people, you know, will just cure in the sun. But if you live somewhere in the world where you don't get a lot of sun, or if your prints finish in the middle of the night and you need them for the next day, it's nice to have like this UV light. So you don't have to worry about timing curing your prints when the sun is out. You can just throw them in a box and shine this light, you know, rest this light, and then just keep turning them until they're fully cured. Let's see. And then this masking tape, again, I showed in the wide shot. Um, this, I don't even know how much, most people have this just sitting around. I didn't buy this specifically for the printer, but this helps. You want to, um, I'm not sure about other printers, but at least with the LVMars, Mars, you want to tape the sides of the LCD screen so just in case any resin spills it will not seep in directly into your machine and also I've heard that it helps with the uh, FEP sheet um, uh, from sucking or the, the, the suction force of the FEP sticking to the LCD screen so every time the print bed lifts off the FEP uh, has a level of suction force that you want to keep as uh, low as possible to keep the prints from sticking to the, the fat. Um, and then along those lines as well, this is another thing that you might want to invest in is this uh, uh, PTFE lubricant. So if you, ever, you are having a bunch of print failures, uh, specifically models that um, stick to the fat, uh, that peel off of the build plate, clean out your print bed, take this, uh, squirt it on, and then just a couple drops, and then just brush it on, and then take a, uh, a, a microfiber towel and wipe it away. Uh, you know, you know, just rub it into the FEP, and it really, really works. Um, this has saved me from a lot of print failures. Um, and then here is just. Uh, a lot of the tools that I use laid out. So I mentioned uh, microfiber towel. It's good, probably. I uh, on Amazon, I think uh, I just bought a big box of them, relatively cheap, and uh, it's worth having just because you really don't want to be rubbing a paper towel on the FEP, and it's also nice once your models come out of the IPA to just pat them dry with a microfiber towel it really helps them clean up nice um, uh, to avoid uh, little bits of resin that might might have stuck to your model and if you don't, if you've ever cleaned off a model and it doesn't uh, get fully um, you don't get all of the remaining resin off of it sometimes there will be little white splotches that uh, that appear when you cure it so to avoid that you probably want to use a microfiber towel. Uh, and then I'll just go down the line here. Yeah, paper towels. Always want to have some paper towels on hand. And it's nice to just have them out so you can rest tools that might get covered in resin. This is uh, an extra uh, resin tank. Nice to have on hand just in case. Um, actually, not pictured here. I also have additional FEP sheets that I've had to you know, use to change out the FEP. Um, not 100% necessary, but, you know, another worthy investment, just in case you need to do, you do need to change it out. Um, you don't need to get a second tank as well, but it's nice to have, just to be able to switch them out quickly, uh, if you're in a rush. The metal scraper and this plastic scraper both come in the toolbox set. Um, and then you'll also get one of these brushes, and this is good just for, like, brushing away, uh, the, the resin, the excess resin that's on the model when you're cleaning it. It's also good to use uh, if you're brushing the lubricant on the uh, the FEP. Needle nose pliers, this was just like in a tool set and this is just useful if uh, you're breaking away supports and it's a part of a model that you can't really fit your fingers in. Once the supports are broken away, this is nice just to be able to um, 
reach in and, and grab the supports and pull them away gently. Um, and then these, these clippers, they come with a tool set uh, as well. Here, uh, and, and these are incredibly useful, obviously, for clipping away supports. Uh, and then this is the Dremel I was talking about earlier. And the, this is, these are the additional um, heads for the Dremel. So there's like, um, not just like this little sanding tool, you can also buff and polish your model as well. So that's all super useful. I covered this one. Oh yeah, and then this is outside. I didn't include this on my list as far as like money is concerned, but this is just a bucket, a plastic bucket. And it's nice just to leave this outside. And when your Tupperware is filled to the brim with um, uh, resin gunk and excess supports, just take it outside, put it in the bucket, and let it like really really cure and then eventually when that's hardened then it's safe to throw it away all right so as far as the cost is concerned these actually have gone down in price and the printer and the resin is going to be to i think the the elgo mars is on sale now at the time of this recording for only 200 dollars, which is really good i think that's about 50 dollars cheaper than i got it for um, and then a bottle of resin is roughly 30 bucks, depending on the brand and the type. So you could really get started depending on how much of this stuff you have just lying around your house. You may not need to invest in anything else. The gloves were about 20 bucks a box. The funnel, which came in a pack, uh, was $8. Um, the microfiber towels were about 20 bucks. The UV light was 12 the pickle storage container was 15 the Dremel was 40 the additional FEP sheets were 20 and the alcohol, which came in three uh, quart-sized bottles, was 30 so 10 bucks a bottle. And this was at the beginning of the pandemic when alcohol was really expensive. I'm not 100% sure how much I, it is right now. Uh, the lubricant is... Uh, about eight dollars and this, these are all prices from Amazon I believe so roughly if if you want to spend the absolute bare minimum and get started you can do it for under 250 bucks um, if you want to invest in all this stuff I think it's probably around 400 so anywhere from like you know 230 to 400 so I mean that's relatively cheap and just a um, you know, a couple of years ago, you couldn't even find a nice printer for under that. And that was just for the printer. So the prices have definitely come down. It's definitely uh, affordable for most people, I would say, who want to get into this hobby. And I hope this was helpful for you, just, you know, showing everything that I was, I'm using and maybe give you some ideas about what you want to invest in or what you think that you might not need. And if this was helpful for you, please leave me a like. If you have anything else you'd like me to cover, uh, let me know in the comments below. And please subscribe, like, share, all of that really helps me out. And until next time, thanks for watching, guys.